Hi everyone, welcome back to another lesson. We're talking about the signs and symptoms of cluster headache in this lesson, and we're also gonna talk about the important triggers of cluster headaches later on in this lesson. Before we talk about the signs and symptoms, let's talk about what cluster headaches are. So cluster headaches are also known as histamine headaches. They are a primary neurovascular headache disorder involving groups or clusters of headache episodes over a certain period of time. So it's primary, meaning that there's no other underlying cause, and they come in groups or clusters, meaning that they come in multiple episodes in a certain period of time. We're going to talk about this in more detail in the upcoming slides. Cluster headaches affect less than 1% of the gender population. More specifically, it's probably around 0.1% of the gender population that is affected with this condition. And the mean age of onset of cluster headaches occurs between the ages of 20 to 40 years old. And males outnumber females 3 to 1, so males are more likely to experience cluster headaches. And there's a strong family history of cluster headaches. If you have a first degree relative, meaning that if you have a parent or sibling or child that has cluster headaches, you are 14 to 39 times more likely to also have cluster headaches than other individuals in the population. So very important. There is a strong family history. Now let's talk about the clinical features of a cluster headache. So as mentioned before, it's a group or cluster of headaches. This is where the name of this condition comes from. And groups or clusters of headaches are going to occur in relatively short succession. And then there's going to be a period or a gap between episodes. And then we're going to have other clusters of headaches later on. So there's going to be a cluster of headaches. So it could be multiple episodes that occur in a short period of time. And then there's going to be a remission period. There can be a short or long period of time between the next grouping of headaches. Now, these headache episodes occur most commonly during sleep or early morning hours. There is some connection with the circadian rhythm. And when patients have these clusters of headaches, the frequency of these headache episodes can be anywhere from one every other day up to eight times per day. This is going to be more common to occur in patients with cluster headaches. And these headache episodes have a sudden onset and they can peak within 10 to 15 minutes and they can last from 15 to 180 minutes or up to three hours. And the episodes can occur over the course of several weeks. And there are particular sex differences in that episodes last longer and are more severe in female patients. So although male patients are more likely to have cluster headaches, if female patients have them, they are generally longer lasting and more severe. So the cluster headache is going to involve a unilateral headache, so meaning that it's going to be on one side, so it's going to occur on one side. The pain is going to be retroorbital, meaning that the pain is going to be oftentimes behind the eye or orbital or around the eye, and it can cause temporal or cheek or jaw pain. So temporal, so around the temples, the cheek and the jaw can also be affected by this pain as well. The severity of these headache episodes are often severe or very severe and it can be so bad that it can awaken patients from sleep. We talked about the fact that these cluster headaches can occur during sleep and if it does it can awaken the patient. The quality of these headaches are going to be a constant pain. They're going to have aching or stabbing sensation and it may feel like the eye is being pushed out or may feel like the eye is bulging out. Some other important findings we can see during these headache episodes is that the eye of the affected side can be red and watery. So there can be conjunctival injection. So you can see conjunctival injection here, these little dilated blood vessels in the conjunctiva of the eye. There can also be tearing or lacrimation, so there can be running eyes. And this red watery eyes going to occur in the majority of patients who have cluster headache episodes, and it can occur in up to 90% of patients. Other symptoms we can see is nasal congestion. So having a stuffy nose, a runny nose can also occur, so rhinorrhea. This affects from 50% to 75% of patients. We can also see eyelid edema. So along with that red watery eye, we can also see a swelling or an inflammation of the eyelid. This can occur in 59% of patients and it's going to occur on the ipsilateral side, meaning that the side that also has the pain or that retroorbital or orbital pain. We can also see ptosis. Ptosis is going to also occur on that ipsilateral side, again that side that we see the pain occurring on. And ptosis is a drooping eyelid. So we can see a drooping eyelid, a swollen eyelid, red watery eyes, and then that very severe pain that feels like it's behind the eye or around the eye. Very common with cluster headaches. 
We can also see meiosis. So meiosis is going to be, again, on that affected side, the ipsilateral side. And meiosis is going to be pupil constriction. So the pupil becomes smaller in size. If we were to look at this image here, this pupil is smaller than this one. So it's a reduced diameter of the pupil versus the unaffected side. And we can also see issues with excessive sweating. So there can be issues with facial sweating and more specifically, the forehead is going to be involved. And this too is also going to be on the ipsilateral side. So in this image, it looks like it's on both sides or bilateral, but when you have a cluster headache, again, it's going to be unilateral. So it's going to be one-sided, that pain around the eye or behind the eye. And you can also have some of these other effects, including excessive sweating on the forehead on that affected side. So the other side of the forehead often is not going to have excessive sweating. It's going to be on the ipsilateral or affected side. And the excessive sweating can occur in roughly a quarter of patients. We can also see issues with photophobia and phonophobia. So photophobia is light sensitivity and phonophobia is sensitivity to sound. So light appears too bright, it can cause the patient to close their eyes, it can be too bright for them. And phonophobia is a sensitivity to sound, it may feel like certain sounds are very loud and it may feel like your ears are being hurt. Again, this is also going to occur unilaterally or on the ipsilateral side, again that side where we're having that pain. This is in contrast to migraines. We can see photophobia and phonophobia in migraine headaches, but in migraine headaches, the photophobia and phonophobia are going to be bilateral. It's going to occur on both sides. So this is a key differentiating characteristic with regards to cluster headaches. We can also see issues with allodynia. Allodynia is the sensation of feeling more sensitive to pain from non-painful stimuli. So this is something that can occur perhaps on the ipsilateral side of the face. If you were to touch the face, it may feel quite painful. That shouldn't be something that occurs because touching it is a non-painful stimuli. This allodynia seems to more likely occur in female patients or those with an earlier onset of this condition. So if they've had this condition from a younger age, they're more likely to experience this symptom. And allodynia is going to occur in up to a third of patients. Now let's talk about some of the triggers of these types of headaches. So we talked about the fact that these types of headaches are also known as histamine headaches. It is true that histamine does seem to play a role in the pathophysiology, but there are many different complex pathophysiological mechanisms with regards to these headaches. So histamine is one of them, but there are many other pathophysiological mechanisms that do play a role in these headaches, including the circadian rhythm or the biological clock. So some of the triggers of these particular headaches include alcohol consumption, tobacco use or smoking. This is actually one of the most common triggers and associated factors with regards to having cluster headaches. It has been estimated that up to 88% of patients who have cluster headaches are also smokers as well. Very hot and cold weather or extremes in temperature also seem to trigger these headaches as well. We can also see light exposure triggering these headaches. So a common example would be watching television. Watching television can trigger these headaches. Stress can also trigger them. We can see caffeine use being a trigger. Chocolate consumption can also be a trigger. Exposure to strong scents, so perfumes can trigger these headaches as well. Exercise can also trigger, especially rigorous exercise. And then certain medications like nitroglycerin can also trigger these headaches as well. Please check my full lesson on cluster headaches if you want more information. Please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.